Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Takara Tomi Transformers Premium Finish War for Cybertron Leader Class Ultra Magnus. Now to be honest I wasn't entirely sure that if I was going to in fact actually review this guy just because I was really not impressed at all with their War for Cybertron Megatron. I actually thought that it was a kick in the shin to fans who have in fact actually paid almost double to get that guy in the collection especially considering that the mass produced Netflix version has in fact actually got a better paint job than the Premium Finish version. However, when some of the in-hand images began to circulate of this Ultra Magnus, I have got to be honest to say, it actually looked to be the best one yet. So I thought I'd give this War for Cybertron subline another chance and see how this guy actually stacked up. So very quickly taking a look here at the box, you can see a great image of Ultra Magnus in robot mode as well as in the truck mode. Here's hoping he looks half as good as we're actually seeing here on the front of the package. As we spin our attention here to the side, we've got some images recreated from the show itself. So Megatron just about to shoot Ultra Magnus there in the back. And as we spin our attention here, to the back of the box you can see there we've got some really nice product shots of the almost albino prime ultra magnus there in bot and truck mode and of course once again another scene recreation so without further ado let's crack this guy open and see whether or not the third repaint of this mold is in fact the most accurate version yet and so here we have ultra magnus cracked open and out of the packaging and surprisingly this figure has actually turned out pretty nicely done certainly leaps and bounds better when in comparison to their version of megatron however personally for me still not 100 percent perfect to what I would expect from a Takara Tomy import release. Now you can see that in regards to the mold, it's exactly the same as the Wave 1 Ultra Magnus, as you would expect considering that it is inspired directly from that Siege series. I think that in regards to a mold itself, it's fantastic looking, really, really cool design for the character. And in regards to the paint, I've got to be honest and say that out of the three versions we've seen of this guy, the Wave 1, the Netflix repaint, and now this figure, I think this is the best one we've seen. And I will bring out that Netflix repaint for a comparison in just a second. But you can see that in regards to the detailing, I think the face sculpt looks awesome now personally i absolutely love the shade of blue that they've decided to go for on this guy it looks really really well done you can see the gun metal used for the antenna as well as there for the face plate really love the sculpt work going on for the head design now you will notice that similarly to their siege megatron we unfortunately are still seeing that almost 3d printed on battle damage instead of proper paint strokes personally i don't think it looks the best it does look slightly better however here on ultra magnus when in comparison to megatron that digital printing is nowhere near as obvious but still i don't think it is up to par with what we would have expected from Takara maybe five or ten years ago. You can see here for the shoulder pauldrons we've actually got some really nice crack detailing to match the appearance on the show. The same can also be said here for this side and the missiles unlike the actual Netflix version have in fact actually been completely painted this time around which I think looks really nicely done. We can see some nice battle damage going on here for the shoulder pauldrons. Once again not the greatest paint in my opinion. You can clearly see how it has literally just been stamped on. I would have loved for it to have actually been painted on but you can see here for the chest unit personally the best look that I've seen from all three figures so far. I think this looks really nicely done. We've got a mixture of gunmetal red and of course silver here for this chest piece. The transparent blue looks awesome. And then as we just spin our attention here down to the biceps as well as the forearms, once again, I don't think that battle damage looks too bad at all. Nowhere near as obvious looking as the Siege Megatron in terms of the 3D printing. And then we turn our attention here to the legs. Now, personally, this is where you're going to see some of those areas of which basically look as if though they've been carried over from Siege Megatron. You can clearly see how that has been printed on instead of actually painted on the digital detailing just isn't the best looking in my opinion now granted considering these are based on an anime series i guess you can kind of get away with this almost computer generated look but personally i just would have loved for it to have been actual paint instead of printed on details and then as we just spin our attention down to the lower section you can once again see that really nice gunmetal silver or gunmetal gray i should say used here for the shin and finally i actually think the paintwork here for the feet doesn't look too bad at all we've also got some nice detailing and weathering going on for these side pieces of the legs and then as we just flip our attention here to the back of Ultra Magnus surprisingly they have in fact actually painted some areas here on the back so that is definitely nice to see so in all in regards to paint as well as plastic I actually think this is a really cool looking figure now if I had any criticisms with this it's that I would have absolutely loved them to have included the top that came packaged with the Dark of the Moon Studio Series Megatron I really think that would have completed this figure and basically would have made this the best version of Ultra Magnus out there period as it stands it is just essentially a repaint had they packaged in that top I really think it would have been the complete package but in regards to accessories of course we've got the missiles here on the side as well as this blaster which has been completely painted in this really nice grey paint you can see there that looks very nicely done and we do in fact also see the return here of the side guns however sadly unlike the wave 1 version they haven't gone the extra mile to in fact actually paint the interior of the barrels in silver and there is no dry brushing applied to these at all so I do find that to be slightly lacking as mentioned at the beginning I won't bore you guys with the actual 
articulation, but one thing I will mention is that the hip joints appear to be a lot tighter than on the original version. They are still held on via friction and are not ratcheted, which is unfortunate, but in regards to what we were seeing with the Wave 1 version, a lot better, and the ratchets going forwards are certainly a lot more heavy duty when in comparison to the previous two figures. Now, bringing out that Netflix repaint here for a quick comparison, both of these actually look really well done, but when you factor in the gunmetal grey as well as the deeper, darker shade of blue that we've got going on here with this premium finished version, I've got to give it props to Takara. I do find this to be the more accurate rendition. There's just something about this particular figure that comes across rather cheap. I definitely think that it is in regards to the white plastic as well as the blue. They just look too vibrant and too almost plasticky when in comparison to this, which to me looks a lot higher grade. You can also see the darker paint, in my opinion, just suits this overall aesthetic a lot better when in comparison to the lighter white that we're seeing on this version. And overall, the paint does appear to be vastly improved here for this rendition. You can see how we've got the cracks on the shoulders. The missiles are in fact completely painted as so is the blaster. And once again, the nice subtle details of weathering that we've got even on the back of the figure to me make this the better version of Ultra Magnus overall. Now, very quickly turning to transformation to get this guy into the Albino Prime to begin with, you're of course just going to want to take the weapon, set that there off to the side. We can come here to the back, fold this section down, remove the shoulder armor, and of course, repeat the same process here. So just detach that. We can then spin our attention to the front, lift this front piece up, take this back section, disengage that, and just set that here off to the side. We can then take this forearm armor and just pull that clean off. And of course, repeat the same process here for this side. And then for some finishing touches, it literally is just sliding the lower armor off of the legs, flipping the heel spurs out, of course, taking the skirt piece, rotating that around. I do believe that your own flat is supposed to hinge this section forward, disengage the arms, fold this out, fold the head out, snap that into place, snap that there into place, and then this here should shoot upwards, snap that in there, and then we've got Ultra Magnus in the almost Optimus Prime form. And once again, in regards to this, I've never been a huge fan of the design in general, but I do think the color is by far the best we've seen. Ultra Magnus this time around is literally sporting just gray plastic, which for my review station is so much nicer when in comparison to the white plastic. But just overall, in terms of an actual design itself, I really think it complements some of the sharper details of the sculpt. You can see he's actually never looked better in my opinion. It really does allow you to appreciate all of the various different nuts and bolts that we've got going on whereas with the white rendition it did allow some of those details to get slightly lost in the plastic you can see here for the front chest unit i think that looks great with the transparent and of course the silver underneath the yellow headlights some really nice metallic almost turquoise accents going on here for the skirt piece as well as for these arrows and the same can also be said here for the actual shin pads and as we just flip to the back just completely gray plastic sadly no dry brushing actually applied onto the back of the figure but considering that nine times out of ten i'm just going to display this guy in the actual combined form i'm not really that fussed and you can see that face sculpt actually looks really well done. Now, very quickly bringing in the Netflix rendition. Of course, it's completely white, so my review station is sadly going to blast it out of the equation, but you can just see there that once again, I do just find this version to look slightly better, especially now that we've got that silver paint underneath this section, whereas that was completely missing on this Netflix rendition, which once again, personally, I just didn't find to look the best. You can also see if I just rotate this section around, there was no paint on that front skirt piece, whereas this time with the PR version there is, and the same can also be said here for the lower shins. So I'd love to know down in the comment section below, out of the two, which is your preferred version. One thing worth mentioning is that I won't be able to give you a direct comparison in vehicle mode, just as when I originally got this guy, I did remove the truck cab kibble, and I cannot find it anywhere. So if I were to transform him in truck mode, he definitely would look slightly unsightly. So we'll just get down to transformation here for the premium finished version. To begin with, of course, course exactly the same as the original version so just shoot this section here forwards that will then allow us to collapse that down rotate this here to the front and shoot these here to the back and then just take this pull this forward rotate the head around snap that into place and then we can proceed to rotate this around and snap that section there in like so. We can leave that how it is. We can come to the underside, just fold the heel spurs in, collapse that in upon itself, bring this up, snap that in there, snap that section in there. One thing which is really nice to see is despite this being the third rendition, none of the joints at all appear to be loose. Everything is, if anything, in fact, actually tighter than the first production run. And then of course, we just take these here, 
shoot them to the back. And there we've got Ultra Magnus fully transformed up into the front cab. Never looking the best. Personally, I think the best angle of this is from the front. Of course, if you turn it to the side, it is just a train wreck from here on. But once we get the trailer attached, it should look slightly better. You can see very nice looking details going on for this. But overall, of course, it is rather lackluster without the trailer. So let's get that, of course, transformed. So for this, what I like to do is come to this region first. Of course, just extend this out, pop this section through, and essentially that is ready for transformation. We can then take these sections, extend all of these panels out and I've always found the engineering of this to be really impressive just how compact it becomes for the leg form and how it extended and how literally all of this is stored away in there it's really really nicely done but then just come to this one and of course extend all of that out I believe now what we can do is combine these so we just rotate here inwards this section will just slide in and then of course this section as well just snap into place we can then just align all of these panels up appropriately ensuring that everything there is clipped together and then in regards to these pieces if my memory serves me correctly they do in fact snap into place something like this so just snap that in there and then for these particular sections you are supposed to combine these two halves and this is where we now bring back in the cab as that will slide into that joint. And then on the interior, you can see how we've got two clips that these two ports will in fact tab into. So just shoot that in like so. Take this here, snap that there into place, and then just effectively clip all of that in. Come to this side. And of course, Repeat the same process and there we've got Ultra Magnus fully transformed up into the truck and trailer. Now as mentioned previously mold wise this is identical to the original version so for those of you who didn't perhaps like the look of this you're still not going to like it here with the premium finished version however much like robot mode I really do think this almost darker color scheme that we've got going on for the premium finish looks better overall I just love the gray cab the darker blue as well as the darker red it looks really impressive to me you can see here for this front section it has in fact actually been painted really nicely we've got the autopoint insignia some gun metal details as well as some pretty decent weathering effect going on here all of the hubcaps have in fact been completely picked out in silver unlike the netflix version if i recall correctly and you can see sadly the side of the trailer is pretty bland in terms of paint i don't think it would have cost them much to have added some of that digital detailing just to really really make this look war torn but as we spin here to the back you can clearly see the feet visible which have never been the best and then as we take a look at it here from a bird's eye perspective we've got some nice silver detailing here at the top and i believe that pretty much wraps it up for ultra magnus in vehicle mode of course you can still take some of the weapons from the bot mode such as the missiles and just port them there onto the top we can take these guns here and i believe they are designed to attach like this and the same can also be said here for this side, but that pretty much wraps up the Transformers Takara Tomy Premium Finish Leader Class Ultra Magnus. In my opinion, definitely one of the better releases we've seen from this subline so far. Leaps and bounds better when in comparison to their version of Megatron. I really do think this is what the Premium Finish line should be. Once again, I still don't think it is 100% perfect. I would love them to actually apply more paint to these figures instead of essentially, for the most part, just changing the shade of plastic that the figure has been cast in. But with this figure, I think it works really nicely in regards to a definitive Ultra Magnus if you're after the version that actually appeared on the show I think this is the figure to go for in my opinion it's a lot better looking than the Netflix rendition that Hasbro and Takara actually put out I believe two years ago now but for those of you who already own either of the two previous releases is this guy really worth the pickup especially considering that I believe he's 25% more expensive I know the original version retailed for roughly £50 whereas this goes anywhere between £75 and £80 and depending on where you are in the world considering this is an import for most of us it may in fact even be more expensive honestly if you own those previous two figures i don't think this is worth it but of course if you've missed out on those two releases whilst this guy is still more expensive i think considering that you were cutting down picking up those two versions you are essentially saving your money in the long run just as of course you haven't picked up those two previous leader figures and even the spoiler pack i believe was a lot more expensive than a leader release so for this i actually think it's worth it if you haven't got the previous two figures if you own them then maybe this is not one for you if you're a completionist i can definitely see it appealing to you i'd really love to know your thoughts down in the comments 
comment section below. Do you guys think that Takara did in fact hit the mark where this premium finish Ultra Magnus is concerned? Or much like some of the previous figures that I've taken a look at over on the channel, do you in fact actually find this to be a major miss? As always, I thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.